What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and let's talk about iRacing's newly released IndyCar AI and the offline IndyCar racing experience, or I guess single player IndyCar racing experience within iRacing. Somehow this is my first video featuring iRacing's AI. I just more or less entirely ignored it because I've never particularly spent too much time with it as for me, the whole point of iRacing is multiplayer and if it isn't for the multiplayer then well... I will be going elsewhere, thank you very much. However, that has changed with this release, and a release that apparently happened about three months ago, which relates to the car as well, because I'm an IndyCar guy. I'm an IndyCar fan in part because of the fact that you race on everything that is IndyCar. You have ovals, you have street circuits, you have road courses, you got the whole wide gamut. And unfortunately, this is where the iRacing experience kind of falls off the rails for me. I've done a billion Indy Fixed races over the years, and I'll do a billion more for the dumbness that is Indy Fixed. But at the same time, I never got into the road racing side of things, largely because the series has just always been really not that appealing to me. Either due to low participation, and thus having to schedule my races throughout the day or the week, and kind of work around that, or having races that are just honestly too long for what I'm looking to do, the alternating road course oval schedule in the, the open series environments, this is not a plea for more series within iRacing's multiplayer environment. I know how we ended up here, I understand it, and, and it is what it is, but it just never clicked for me. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the car, the Dolara IR18, the current spec Indy car. This car's been a bit of a thing within iRacing. Back in the days of the virtual IndyCar series thingy-majigger that we were doing back in early 2020 during that whole period of the world, a lot of the real-world drivers didn't like the car in iRacing, and it wasn't difficult to understand why by any means. Honestly, the IndyCar has historically not been one of the best or most enjoyable cars to drive on a road course within iRacing, be it either the IR18, the DW12, or the IR05, that's just kind of been a thing. That's no longer the issue, I feel. This car, on a road course, is honest to goodness, the best car in iRacing. The thing grips, it sticks, it stops, it goes, it dances, it squirms, it rotates in the corner, it understeers, it oversteers, it does everything that you could possibly want it to do and it does it in a way that gives you the utmost confidence to just drive the wheels off the thing. So let this be your warning. If you're sleeping on the IndyCar and iRacing, you need to wake up. So let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the single player racing experience for the IndyCar. Specifically the AI behavior, that's the thing that's new in this update, as well as the thing that's gonna, well, outside the multiplayer environment, this is kind of what you need to go racing. So let's go ahead and talk about it. A few ground rules to go ahead and start with. First of all, we're only talking about the IR18, IndyCar AI. Uh, the DW12 and the IR05 do not currently have AI supported. That's not a feature available on those cars. I'm also not talking about the iRacing AI as a whole. I'm talking about specifically what I've seen racing with the iRacing IR18 AI. And I'll also go ahead and mention, I have not tested with the default livery skin pack roster whatever they call it that comes with iRacing by default because why would you I went straight to trading paints downloaded a 2021 season uh, skin pack and driver name roster and all that good stuff so I don't know if that makes the AI better or worse but I wouldn't have it any other way so your mileage may vary but really if you're using the default skins why why are you doing that so how does the AI work well besides a few behaviors I'll touch on in a minute they are absolutely phenomenal. I don't quite know if I would take this over an online race because there just isn't that same unpredictability factor of racing with you know, actual humans, but that is definitely offset by the fact that I can race like whenever I want and however long of a race I want. You know, it's all up to my control and I can adjust my skill level as I progress on a track or familiarity with the car and all that stuff, but what you're seeing on screen hopefully illustrates why I'm going to speak so highly here for a moment of them. This is from a race at Iowa Speedway, of course. I'm running the high line because I always run the high line. It's kind of what I do. 
battling with virtual Colton Herta for position. He's running the low line. You'll see the back and forth action between those two lines run side by side, you know, like it ain't no thing but a chicken wing. And then we get into traffic because, you know, it's Iowa Speedway, seven eighths of a mile. It's Indy cars. The lap time is very short and traffic is the name of the game and how that all works. And somehow we're running multiple grooves. We're going three wide. The AI is able to keep up and isn't getting bogged down in any way that's like, oh, well, I clearly have the advantage because I'm a human. I, I can move all over the track as need be and I can better process the judgment. Like, yes, I can. I do have the advantage in the traffic. Don't get me wrong. That's still a thing. But by goodness, the way the AI was able to keep up was nothing short of me literally doing this race and exclaiming, holy moly as we're going three wide and two wide and it's just sticking together like glue uh, it was that good now on the road course side of things it also works really really well i don't think it is as nearly as impressive as the oval ai but i think that's also just a credit to how well the oval ai once it's set up actually it works we'll say the thing that most impressed me with the ai on the road courses I took the Indy cars to Knock Hill, which is a terrible idea on so many levels, but it's a brilliant idea on so many more that you really probably should give it a go if you have the content in iRacing. Because I expected it to fail miserably because that track should be incredibly demanding for AI, but lo and behold, I found that it picked it up and ran with it just like any other track. It, it didn't matter that the lap requires you to drive off the edge of the world multiple times per lap or fling the car into the air and hope the track is where your car lands or anything like that like it just i passed the ai the ai passed me i had to drive to the best of my abilities to keep up once i got them dialed in it's like i don't know if i can ask for anything more than that like it worked and it worked really 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 well when i fully expected it to fall flat on space now there's a few things I wanted to talk about that I'm not so huge upon. Some small little behaviors that keep this experience pulled back a little bit. Some things I'd like to see addressed. First of all, it is a pain in the butt to go ahead and get the difficulty set up and matched and get a race that's the right difficulty for you. Uh, you know, it's really difficult because this isn't just about road racing. It isn't just about oval racing, but it's the two of them. And without the, without the two, the package doesn't make any sense. Like, it loses so much appeal for someone like myself. On the road courses, I have to run the skill range from 80 to 105. That's kind of my standard setting. And then on the ovals, I'm running from 30 to 60. Uh, now, at the same time, some tracks, the AI will kick my ass at these same exact settings, and at other tracks, I will kick the AI's ass at these settings. And it's just one of those things where there's going to be a fudge factor, and it's going to need some tweaking because there's... It, it's just... It just needs more polish and tweaking in this sense, but as long as you go into it understanding that I might need to back out to the menus again if the AI is you know, a second a lap faster than me, or alternatively, I'm a second a lap faster than them, and, and that's not a deal breaker, then I think you'll get along with it just fine once you find your default home settings, if you will. The bigger problem, and one that is much more difficult to ignore, is the fact that the AI is incredibly terribly slow when it comes to cold tires. Uh, this means starts, restarts, you're going to be flying through traffic like nobody's business. Uh, pit stop cycle, you're going to have a massive advantage on your outlap because they just can't keep up at all. Uh, on road courses, like the first two laps, you're probably going to be four seconds total faster between those two laps if they're set to roughly just about the same skill level and lap time as you are because they're just not able to handle cold tires at all. This is one of those things where it's such an advantage it is something that if you choose to take advantage of it, it can be absolutely game-breaking because it does give you that big of an advantage. However, if you are someone who's willing to just be like, okay, I shouldn't just go ahead and take 20 positions in two laps because I clearly can, I'm going to instead just kind of chill here and then the race will actually resume at that stage. Because once you get into the race, you know, three or four laps in, then they'll go the same speed as you. 
but until then you have a massive advantage as it is currently. And then there is also just the fact that they're still AI, and some of these are just little behaviors that I don't think are ever reasonable to expect to go away entirely, at least in the near-term future, but things I would like to see addressed or, or little performance that kind of just annoy me. Uh, first of all, they all run the same groove by default in ovals as far as I can tell. They will go multi-groove as required by the situation and the racing but they do tend to fall back to one line which just looks a little goofy they also do the same thing on road courses as well they'll run exactly the same line and run in the tire tracks with one another which also results in the track rubbering in in a very goofy looking fashion uh in the areas where they take a defensive line on occasion it just kind of looks silly not a deal breaker it just is a thing uh then there's also the fact that the ai uh, will have a tendency to just not make up their mind every now and then. Sometimes they'll just break 10, 15 feet earlier for no reason at all. Just just a thing. They'll just, like, why'd you do that? Just to destroy my front wing? Thanks, Jack Wagon. Uh, that's why I suggest leaving the, the damage turned off, just because it will happen. It doesn't happen frequently enough where you couldn't race without damage, but just it's a frustration when they just slow down for no reason. Uh, same with every now and then, they'll just take a corner like five miles an hour slower than what they had been doing the previous ten laps, which is just kind of like, again, thanks a lot, Jack Wagon, but it's not the thing that's a deal breaker or really all that problematic or difficult to deal with because, like, generally it works so well that some of these little things I'm willing to to overlook because what is there is honestly so darn impressive that the big big thumbs up like i've raced the indy car on road courses more in the last week than i've raced indy cars on i racing on road courses in the last 10 years and i am 100 percent here for it so i'm going to continue to do this because it is a blast now that said there is the question what is the value this is a question i know is going to come up and I want to go ahead and try and address it in the video rather than try and do it in a comment. So, first of all, if you're one of those people that's a big-time IndyCar fan and you're into it, you know, and you want an IndyCar game and you don't want to wait till whenever that actually ends up happening in a few years, and hopefully that's a good game, although we all know it probably won't be. Hopefully those words age poorly. I very much hope to be wrong. But, uh, you know, is it worth it? Honestly, I don't think so. If you only here for the IndyCar racing the, the price premium you're gonna pay for it is just it's absurd it's not worth it I can't suggest it on any level although if you choose to that's your own thing but I don't think it's worth it as much as I may have put praise upon it the the more interesting question is the person who's into IndyCar wants to race these cars but kind of like myself or the the official multiplayer series just never really worked out for one reason or another or didn't have that appeal you know you already have some content built up within iRacing and you're just coming back you know should you resubscribe honestly I don't think so I, I my brain wants to say no because I just don't think resubscribing to iRacing to play single player is worth it the whole concept of iRacing is multiplayer and it breaks my brain to say otherwise. Like I, I just logically cannot allow that. But at the same time, as much fun as I've been having, as much use as I've had with them, as much more races I plan on doing with them in my own time, I find it hard to not suggest it, if that makes sense. I, I don't suggest it, but at the same time, I wouldn't think you're crazy if... I guess that's the best way to describe it. I could have summed up this whole section by saying, I wouldn't suggest it, but I definitely would not think you're crazy. Because that is the most accurate way to describe it. So, I'm going to go fling some indie cars around Bathurst against the AI again now. So, uh, yeah, how I recommend it. Bad idea. Great idea. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I Bye. Clear. Left side. Clear. Two more. 
let's go. Car on your left. Still there. Clear. White flag. Stay smooth. Car on your left. Keep to the right. Clear. There's the flag, it's over. Nice run, solid work.